I'm going to show you how to transform your footage from this into this. What is up everyone, my name is Danilo and today I'm going to be showing you how you can easily make your footage look like as if it was shot with an anamorphic lens. Now the three most noticeable things when you watch footage taken with an anamorphic lens are wider footage, lens flares and oval bokeh. And the only thing that we will not be replicating here will be oval bokeh because that way we'll be distorting our footage and we do not want to do that. So we will end up just adding lens flares to our footage and making it look wider. Now to do all of that, I'm going to be using DaVinci Resolve, which is a free program for editing, color grading, sound design, visual effects. So I'm going to be using that and let's hop into DaVinci Resolve. So now we are in the Venture Resolve and I've got my footage dragged into the timeline and I'm using some footage of a BMW that I used for a video I did before. And the reason I'm using this footage is because the headlights of the car are turning on and that is the point where I want to add lens flares and there's an easy way to do it and there's a harder way to do it. Obviously the harder way is going to be the better way and we are going to see better results. All right, so the easy way to do it would be just to go to open effects and filters and search for glow and add that to the footage. And you can see there's a lot of settings on the right hand side, which will allow us to adjust and make our perfect lens flares. But this would be the wrong way to do it, because if you have lots of glow already in your footage, it is going to be affecting not only headlights, in this particular video but it is also going to be affecting the light behind the car and that is something i don't want in my footage i just want the lens flares on the headlights of the car so to do that we're going to first delete this filter right here and we're going to move into color tab and right here you can see i've got already my color grade applied this is because i used it already in a video before so don't mind that we're going to move this aside and we're going to be adding a new node so I can just right click here and add node, add serial and this is the node where we'll be applying our filter. And to find our filters we're going to go into effects right here. We're going to search for the glow effect again and we're going to add that to our node. Now we're going to adjust the settings and the first setting that we get is the select output and we want to always have it on glowing image you do not touch this setting the second setting is the shine threshold so the shine threshold is very important and the lower we put the shine threshold the more light it is going to be added to the glow and we want to keep that somewhere around the default 0.75 and 0.9 i find that to be the golden middle ground for this effect and I'm going to put it at 0.85. Now the second part of settings is shape and spread. And the most important setting in this part is the HV ratio, which is the horizontal to vertical ratio. And this setting is going to make our lens flares either vertical or horizontal. And we want to make them horizontal. So we're going to increase this to the maximum, which is one. And as you can see already, there is some horizontal lines coming from our headlights. Now we want to increase the spread because we want our lens flares to be a bit longer than this. This is really too short. So we want to keep it spreading. And as you can see, it is also spreading above but we will fix that in the color tab. But first, let's make our lens flares. We're going to increase the relative spread of red, green and blue to the maximum as well. And now we come to the settings called color and composite. So in color and composite, we're going to be adjusting the gain, the saturation and the color of our lens flares. So the first setting is gain and that is going to be increasing the strength and the exposure of our lens flare. And I'm going to be leaving that somewhere around 1 and 1.25. I don't think you should go over that. This is just fine. The next setting is gamma and we want to leave it as is. Now for saturation, you're obviously not going to see any difference if you're using white lens flares. So we're going to adjust the color first and then we're going to adjust the saturation. So for the color, I'm going to be using a blue color that most of the anamorphic lenses have the blue lens flares. So I'm going to be replicating that. And to do that, I'm going to click the color filter, 
I'm going to add a hex code here, which is 277DFF. And this gives me a really nice blue color, which is somewhere in between the teals and purples. Now this blue color might not look that good for now, but once we add some more effects after this, it is going to look much better. And we're going to adjust the saturation. Now you can see that if I decrease the saturation, obviously it comes back to white. And if I do increase it, it goes to a much more saturated blue. And I'm going to put the saturation at two. This is where I keep the saturation most of the time. The next setting I'll adjust is the composite type and it's currently set to add, which is the default. And I'm going to switch it to screen. I found this to be the best setting for lens flares, but obviously you can leave it at add. It doesn't make that much of a difference. It is a slight difference and I like to set it to screen. And obviously the last setting is opacity. You can adjust this to wherever you want. I keep it somewhere around 0.75 so we're going to put just that and now that we've adjusted the lens flare and how it looks we want to adjust which part of the footage it affects and as you can see I've got lens flares all over the place now I've got it under the car I've got it obviously where I want it in the headlights and I've got it on top of the car which is definitely not the place where I want the lens flares and to fix that we're going to go into this tab right here window and we're going to select a linear window. And this is going to basically be masking out any unwanted lens flares from the parts that we don't want. So we're going to be adjusting this and I'm going to be setting a box around the headlights. I'm also adding a little bit of softness to the edges because I want my lens flares to kind of fade out at the sides of the video. So you can adjust this however you want but this is the way to eliminate them from the places that you don't want them at. As you can see, now we've got the lens flares only in the parts where we want them. Now, if we've played video, we can see that, yeah, lens flares are great, but the car is stationary and there is no problem with leaving this window here. But if we had a subject that is moving, obviously this window would stay in the place that we put it. It would not follow the subject. So to follow the subject, we're going to go into this tab right here, which is called Tracker, and we're going to use Cloud Tracker, and we're going to click this button right here, which is Track Forward and Reverse. And it is going to do its work. As you can see, it's tracking the subject. And now that it's complete, you can see that the window that we set is now tracking the subject, which we set it to, and it is perfectly tracking the headlights, and we've got perfect lens flares, so now, even if the car was to move from this place, it would track the headlights of the car. Now I show you how you can add lens flares to your footage and how you can make the mask window track your subject that you're adding your lens flares to. But I want to spice this up a little bit and add some glow to this lens flares, not just leave them as these blue flat lines. So to do that, I'm just going to create another node. And instead of adding a serial node after this, node we're going to add a serial before as you can see it created a node before our node that we added the lens flares to and we're going to select our lens flare node click ctrl c which is copy and click ctrl v which is paste and we've basically pasted the same exact effect to the node before but we're going to switch the color from blue to white and as you can see it is adding a bit of white glow in behind the blue glow but we're going to adjust this a little bit differently because it's white glow and we don't want it to be stronger than our blue glow so we're going to go to gain and reduce it a bit and we're going to set the opacity to 0.5 and we can go back to our blue glow and increase the gain if we want you can basically adjust the settings the way you want so for these settings, this is fine. Gain 0.75, gamma 1, saturation, it doesn't matter. And opacity, we're going to leave it a bit like this. So now if we disable the second node here, which is our white lens flare, we can see that there's some difference to it. As with the blue flare, the white flare also has the same mask window and it is going to be perfectly following the blue flare 
so now we've got the white flare also added behind the blue flare and the reason i put it behind is it makes it a bit less strong and it makes it look like it is really behind the blue flare if you put it after the blue flare the white flare is going to dominate the blue one obviously this is a bit confusing but i hope you get what i'm saying uh, so now we're done with the flares this is obviously it and now i'm going to play the video so you can see how it looks you can see in this frame right here that the blue flare is still dominating but is also getting some glow from that white flare and you can see that the mask window that we added to the flares made them look a little bit less intense in the edges of the footage which is the effect that i wanted to get so this is basically it now that we're done with lens flares we want to make our footage look a bit wider and since this is not zoomed in the only way i can make it appear wider is if i go here to timeline and then output blanking and then select 2.39 and you can see it is adding two black rectangles on top and on the bottom of the footage it is obviously cutting a bit of the top and at the bottom it's not a big deal in this particular case but in some cases it might be so if you're going to make this effect keep it in mind so when you're shooting the footage you want to shoot it a bit wider so there's place to zoom out a bit but obviously i got what i wanted and that's basically the effect that i wanted to show you okay so that's pretty much it for this effect i hope that you learned something new from this video and if you have any questions about the effect or anything else then leave a comment down below and i'll answer every single question and if you enjoyed watching this video then leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these videos and i'll see you in the next one see ya